Welcome to the August 17th Beehive call that is going to be a jail and beehive triage call, plus a whole lot of network issues. We have Santiago, John, myself, Michael, and a few others trickling in. And let's jump to it. Uh, Santiago, you have a question that maybe John can answer. You're seeing, well, first is the broader picture of like, why are you seeing far more context switches when you do a build world on 13.2 versus 13.1. But first off, a very focused question, can we see context switches per CPU? Yeah, that, that's correct. Um, I mean, I'm not sure if it's a problem or not, but I find out that after moving from 13.2 to 13.1 for going back, um, there was a big change on the context, switch, context switches. That box was doing around 400, no, almost 500K um, per second, and then it went to 40K um, or 60K, I can't remember right now. Um, but I was wondering how can I find which process is making those context switches or which, or why they're happening, or which process, but how, what's causing them? So I think there is a way to do this, but for the life of me, I don't remember it on the top of my head. Um, no pun intended, is there a top flag? That's what I was just looking at, and then there's also looking at uh, at PS. I think it's uh, CS, uh, no, not that, slash CS. Total involuntary, so PS has a N NIVCSW, total involuntary contact switches. And then okay. there's an NVCSW, which is total voluntary contact switches. So involuntary is I, N, I, V, C, S, W. So N, I, V up there at the front. Okay. Uh, Siri says P, S. Yeah, yeah, you're watching along. Good. N, yeah, N, I, V, C, S, W. Yes, W, okay. And that is involuntary. Okay. And then voluntary is NVCSW. And those are flags to add to it? Uh, those are going to be in the dash O output format for setup for PS. Does that sound vaguely familiar to folks how to do that? Uh, drop, if you could drop us. Syntax example in chat. Uh, like let, me, let, me, let me set something up here real quick. Perfect. Thank you. And the broader question is also how gran granular does that get? It's a total count. Okay. So it's all it's always going to be it'll always be incrementing and in and subsequent executions of PS give you a delta. Okay. Okay. Can it be pinned down, uh, not pinned might be too accurate a term, but can it be uh, noticed by CPU? Or I guess each process will show the- It's gonna show you it by process. And if you, if you run PS and you ask it to output processes by threads, then you'll be able to determine which thread within a process is guilty. But it'll, it'll, it at least gets you to the point where you can determine where they're coming from. Excellent. Yeah, I'm just testing it and got it. Thanks. Testing, testing. Welcome, Anthony. How are you? Bonsoir, bonsoir. Magnifico. So we jumped right in to talk about uh, Santiago seeing super high context switches on 13.2 versus 13.1. And John has some insights on using flags for, to PS to help narrow that down. And there's an example on screen there. So Antrenig, while he's looking that up, um, did you find your workarounds for the D-Trace network probes, which seem to have either broken paths or dependencies or something? Uh, no, but I am able to reproduce them, and I will do it right now. Cool. And I have two jail questions there. Thanks to 
thank you everyone who joined yesterday. We did some very good work on triage and some jail issues and opportunities. But I think today with those present, we will talk quite a bit about uh, networking. But in the meantime, John, shall I attempt to write up a feature PR for the dynamic Mac handling in SRIOV or based on the mailing list post, or do you want to draft that? Um, I've never actually written one, so I'm not okay, sure I'll try. exactly what we're looking for. I will um, shoot you some uh, draft text. Okay. Okay, here is a very simple... Uh, I'm about to post this for you. There we go. You can, let me, okay, I'm posting to the, oh, where'd it go? I'm posting to the chat a sample PS command that will show context switches. Excellent. Let me know if that doesn't, it should, it gives you a starting point. Obviously you can oh, add, obviously you can add other items to the PS output, but I think that's enough to get you started. Thank you. Okay, yeah. That's good. Thanks. Fantastic. Yes, thank you, John. So on that point, I will get you some text. And just for those who celebrate, John has a early prototype of a LibNFS-based uh, device for Beehive, which is quite exciting. Um, Antrenik, do you want to talk any jail issues, or are you still spinning up your D-Trace? I do have a networking issue that I okay. would like some advice on. If I'm not sure if oh, I know, sure. what you got? Sure. Anyone here uses the IXL interface? Yes, all. <laughs> yes. Okay. Unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> so if I do a, uh, a speed test on uh, two IXL interfaces, I am never able to reach a 10 gigabit connection but if i do it with iperf and you know with dash p2 then i can easily get to 10 gigabit i want to understand is this an iperf being cpu bound issue or is this an ixl possible issue or is this a switch issue unfortunately i have only a single server there so you know my testing mechanics are very uh, not that wide I, I can't just attach a you know a uh, another operating system there with IXL as well. So any thoughts would be appreciated. How many P was that, Antonik? P four. P N P N, and if I do P two, yeah. it automatically gets to ten. Gig. Even oh, just P two. Okay, thank you. Just P two, but without that, it goes like three, three and a half. Sorry, how much you get with one? We won the um, three to three and a half. You just said. Yes. Let's see, three, 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 three and a half. Oh, maybe five. if nothing else is working, I would get four, I mean, um, or or barely four. Let's put it. Can that you way. post but, the iperf, the full iperf command that you're using, if you don't mind? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. And uh, let me join our doc. There we go. And uh, yeah, minutes or doc. I've got it in context here, so. So after, before and after the test, um, again, this is, there's no guarantee this will help, but before and after the test, please take a look at the output of netstat-m. Netstat-m. Yes, make sure that you have enough M buffs and clusters hanging around and that you didn't have a stall. Okay. If you run netstat dash, if you run, if you run netstat dash m, you'll see immediately what I am referring to. I hope. Oh, I see. I see a lot of data in here. Yep, m buffs. Okay, I'm not familiar, so I'm trying to guess what this means. What should one watch for, John? High numbers, low numbers, and. Uh, Something well, if you look at that output, you see a lot of it is in like triples. And 
the or there's a allocated in use and then there's a, uh, a you know overflows or um, or underflow I guess what you want to call it um, mm -hmm. you see current cash total and max for instance yes. and you yes. want to make sure that the 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 current in use uh, total and max never equate to each other because that means you basically are running out uh-huh and this is while it is running or after it has been run I would run or it after. before and after and then look at the numbers I, see. I, I you probably this probably isn't going to solve your problem but I'm trying to give you insight into some additional tools to help debug the problem. I see. Yeah, and Andre, uh, can you paste that output from the command? Yes, sir. And we'll we'll so highlight it as appropriate. Command yep. is this. And um, that's the command. And uh, for future reference only, I'm also pasting this. Uh, Netstat-m. Yes, I can format it. Go ahead. Can you also um, where to go? Where to go? Where to go? Might be interesting to see what the value of that uh, interrupt Q len is. the interrupt queue line i posted i just posted it to the chat it's yeah i'll paste it in there just one second mm -hmm. uh here we go Antrenic, if you're watching the doc that one i am yes that's in cctl yeah there we go uh, it's 256. So, John, this max in total? Yes. So these these two fields, right? Yeah. Great, thank you. Are you seeing retransmissions on the on iperf when it returns, you know, on the server, some on the client tells you I mean retransmissions mm -hmm. on the client, or so 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 on, on iperf I can see the transfer sizes, the intervals and the bitrate. And uh, whenever it's P1, it never goes over four. And as soon as I do P2, it reaches, you know, what's what this, is nine point, you know, three, nine point something. So, and even every channel gets to the size of 4.6 each, right? Which is weird. Like, why is it with P1 smaller, but with P2, even a single channel is becoming bigger. That's what so I'm. Do you, is, do, you have a, do you have a Numa aware box? Do you have multiple sockets or a single socket? It, it, this is a dual socket, yes. Okay. Where is your network card? Is it on the second socket or the first socket? Because I you do may have, not know. You may have some jumping going on between the the incoming interrupts, having to then jump uh, sockets for the handlers. I see. Yeah, I do not know. And what I believe one of the versions of iPerf allows you to pin the uh, threads to a CPU, or you can run it under CPU set. Set exactly. Yeah, I th yeah I think iPerf does allow that. So I think I, I am. I'm, so Michael, I can paste some numbers that I calculated many years ago. I don't actually guarantee these are up to date, but I'll paste them if you want. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. We need to paint this picture. And so this is very much, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to say that anything here that's going to fix the problem, I'm, but I tend to run with some of this stuff. Yep. This is a, again, this is probably a decade old uh, work uh, stuff here. So let me see if I can paste this. Okay, this is just a table. I'm hoping that comes through and yep, you can cut got and paste it. That. Yep, yes, sir. And, and on uh, the NUMA domains, is there an op is somehow the second socket optimal or no, it actually depends on where the network card is. Okay. So when you plug a network card in, it's going into a slot. Yep. Whether it's a built-in slot or it's an adapter slot. 
and you have to determine uh, what is the CPU uh, architecture, or what's the CPU uh, configuration of slots. So adapter slot 2 might go to CPU 0, adapter slot 3 might go to CPU 1. Okay. Um, one other item that I sometimes play with is right here, but I don't think this is going to affect iPerf. Quick, quick question, are you using PowerD or PowerD++ for XX, sorry, to control the CPU frequency? Uh, me? Yes. No, no, this is a massive two terabyte RAM server with you know, 500 something cores, so we're, we, we, we're, we're maxing out everything as much as we can. Oh, okay, okay. okay. So, John, are you changing defaults here, or you're choosing defaults based on the optimal kind of perf target performance? I do yes. like that. By oh, beautiful! Yes. You're doing God's work. I, but I don't. I, please understand. I did this a decade ago. I don't actually remember exactly what I used as a couple of my, as my 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 configs. So it's probably okay, but I'm not. I don't want to guarantee it. Yes, but directing people where to look is half the battle. So thank you for that. Excellent. Um, I, I think it's also a good mention of like the WhatsApp blog post over the last decade, because every year they would paste what tuning they would do on FreeBSD. Remember those? Like how they reached the 2 million connections, how they showed up that. And they had the exact tunings of the stuff that they did in their blog post. I'm not sure if it's there. Yeah, are they Facebook still available? Let's meta. see. If meta, oh, meta. Yes, yeah, so bought them, but 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 uh, um, uh, hopefully in the archives. Uh, no, not NetApp. Uh, yeah. Meta. You know, the meta? Facebook. Oh, no meta. kidding. Okay, got it. You know, meta, meta, but uh, WhatsApp. So, but WhatsApp had very long blog post on how they tuned their free BSDs to support millions of customers on each box. So uh, I hope the tunings are out there. And th that wasn't only for EBSD. They did all also for the Erlang project, how to tune Erlang to support millions of uh, client connections. So um, I I'll try to find those. Uh, and uh, yeah, John, thank you for the, you know, I, I absolutely forgot about the send buffs. I, I haven't tuned any of these things yet. So that might be, and I thought the problem might be switch. But I mean, these are you know very common ten gigabit microtic microtic switches. So I, I don't yeah, assume that right. they have any issues. Do try direct connected if possible. Sorry. Um, do try direct connected if possible, just to rule out you know intermediary devices, especially if someone's tinkering with MTU. For yes, sir. So one other thing I would recommend doing while you're running your test before and after. The look at the IRQs. Okay, yeah. These are the IRQs that are assigned, um, and you want to make sure that they are spread appropriately across the cores of the CPUs. Well, well, that's a, that's different. That's a that's a different issue. Hang on. What I'm saying right now, just to make sure that your card is configured correctly. You want to see these these different interrupt queues all receiving data, okay? Okay. So this one is relatively well balanced. There, there's a couple of queues that aren't getting a lot of input, probably because mm -hmm. I don't have enough MAC address spread in in the, this cluster. Um, but on what happens is you can use if you look at CPU set, it has a thread option where yes. I can uh, map IRQ 192, 193 to CPU, you know, to, to core zero, core one, core two, core three, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. If yeah. you have hyper-threading enabled, then I would advise you to not use hyper-threaded pairs. So mm -hmm. I, I would put, uh, I would put 190, uh, put 193 on hyper-thread pair side A, and then I would put 194 on core 
two hyperthread pair A. Don't use both uh -huh. sides of a hyperthreaded pair. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yes, that's perfect. Okay. Or just disable hyperthreading. <laughs> yeah, now, please understand this is my experience and where I get the best performance. And when I have to go track down what's wrong because I've received a system that's not working quite right and I have to, to jump down and figure out its physical configuration. And I think that's what you're dealing with here. John, so I can highlight those. Can you give me those two pairings, the IRQ I'm number sorry. and the device? Uh, no, I, I'm sorry. I couldn't give you. The only way to no, figure you, out the pairings. You just on mentioned in this example. Did you say like pair 193? Right. So, with... I, so, so 193 would go on core zero uh, thread, core zero thread A, and 194 would go on core one thread A. What you don't want to do is yep set a core and yep core one one thread a never have core zero thread a core zero thread b that's that's a, that's the bad idea so the, so you're right the trick is i don't know how to map the i don't know how to map your cores so core zero and core one might be a hyper threaded pair oh. Does that, do you understand what i'm saying that i didn't get okay now i got it so you mean I, like so it, yeah, sometimes yeah, I, 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 a hyper threaded Sometimes a hyper-threaded pair might be core zero and core 36, right? It depends on how your system decides to map them. And I, I, I don't know that. All is I'm saying is... Is there in FreeBSD that shows us that? Yes, there is. Um, run a syscontrol. Uh, hang on a minute. The, the XML output, right? That's what you mean. Yeah, hold on. I am... That was stupid. CTL dash A. Sometimes my fingers type faster than my brain can tell them what to do. <laughs> That's alone. a good problem to have. So it definitely wasn't was an XML. I remember that for sure. Okay, here we go. It's Kern. C C C U, I think. So I I see it here in kern dot sked dot topology underscore spec. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, kern dot sked underscore topology. Uh, uh, sorry, kern dot sked dot topology underscore spec. Like that. Schedule yeah, schedule. You have to take this out and take a look at it. Uh, paste it yes. if you could, or check my work. Okay, cool. Thank you. There yep, it is. correct. There it is. Just in cases. Great. And here's a sample output from a you know very small laptop. So because you know, the server is going to be like a very massive, massive output. And whoever wrote this inside FreeBSD. I don't know, but thank you very much. It's, this is a very nice XML output. I think that's it was Dev. That command? Uh, the that's, scheduling that's the output. Policy. I think it was Dev. I might be wrong. And uh, uh, and uh, apologies, I, I'm 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 uh, doing so much software and not understanding hardware is my fault. But do, do these things change after a that's reboot? Cool. No, uh, typically no, not unless you've gone in and changed the, um, like you enable or disable hyperthreading or you enable or disable uh, NUMA or NUMA aware. Because you can actually take a NUMA systems and a lot of a NUMA system and a lot of times you can run it in a non NUMA aware mode, which will muck you up pretty badly in my, badly in my opinion. This is great. Thank you very much. Uh, Michael, this, this was my main question of today. And, you know, my, I still have some ZFS issues, but I'll figure that out on my cluster maybe tomorrow. And on the jails stuff, um, yeah, there is a and lot D -trace? of... Things. Did you figure out your... D yes, I'm red? currently okay. logged into my machine and I'm Got trying it. to reproduce the output. Okay. John, thank you. This is invaluable. 
it is a it's it's tooling is what it is. It's tools to allow you to try to figure stuff out is what it boils down to. And I've seen people throw raw hardware at problems and they might be as simple as a oh a, a, a lovely one is a maybe an x8 slot and an x or x8 card and an x4 slot <laughs> and just simply the device is in the wrong slot and it nuke their performance and they chase it for weeks so yeah um all right so the other the only other question that i think was asked which hasn't been answered yet please um, if you were to look at your D message output, and I'm going to paste a sample here. Um, if you look at the tail end of that, it says device 00, zero NUMA domain 0 on PCI 2. So that NUMA domain zero tells you which NUMA domain you're on and, and i.e. you can determine which uh, CPU socket you live on. Excellent. So from the schedule from the schedule out from the sched topology output, you can then determine which cores live on NUMA domain zero on that socket. And then you can use the CPU set and assign IRQs to those cores on that socket, and that will get you your optimal throughput. Michael, Welcome, I am going Daniel. to paste an output. Yep. Hello, Daniel. Welcome. Hey. Are you back on the side of the pond? Yes, back uh, in, uh, on this side of the pond and That's next to a lot of screeching ambulances. So I'll be back in my office in a second. I'm sure you've missed them. Last piece of advice with related to that is I only CPU set the IRQs if it doesn't perform well to begin with. Mm -hmm. Again, this is a tool in your tool belt to help you figure out what might be going on with your system. Uh, okay, uh, a super quick catch up for Daniel. We are running through issues in jail, beehive, and networking, trying to triage some PRs and very much networking issues that we've all encountered. And uh, go ahead and look at the doc. We've covered some fantastic territory, and John's had some insights on, oh, how to learn more from your system. but. Uh, Antronik, you perhaps have a workaround for D-Trace probes that are not working on FreeBSD. I'm not sure if I have workarounds, but this is I a scenario that's working. That. Yep. Uh, we have Userlib D-Trace, which is shipped with every FreeBSD that has preloaded uh, D-Trace scripts inside of them. IP, IPFW, MBUF, SCTP, you know, the list is there, uh, including stuff for processes such as PS info. And whichever script that you choose to run, none of them run because they've been uh, out of sync with the operating system. Uh, these include problems with the uh, 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 parser, the uh, as in as in you know it because it goes. Uh, put it shortly in an API uh, breakage. Uh, things have changed over the years, but this directory has been not. Um, so, so the API changes is brought us here that in a scenario that none of these scripts, as far as I can tell, let me try Erno. I think that was one of the simplest ones, uh, PS dash Erno. Yeah. None of those are running properly. And, uh, the list and the problem goes back to a single file or, or, you know, just two or three files that we are having problem with. And I'm going to, the, the output is a bit uh, long, Michael, but I'll yep. try to paste it properly yep. And trick right it now. down. Yep. Uh, yep. Small yep. fonts actually work quite well, and I'll leave it to the reader to make sense of them. Well, I think the dash V is the correct, yeah, I think the dash V, I'll try again and see how it goes. Um, where is the preprocessor flag?
Yeah, dash C cap. Oh, there we go. So, and this should be really weird output, I guess. I'll find it in a bit. Yeah, but uh, these are the location of the files, and whichever one that you run, they are not running properly. Uh, it's very hard to understand uh, uh, how to debug these issues. I've never, I've never worked with these things before, but I, by accident, I've seen them into this, inside the system, and uh, now that I have, I'm a bit worried that none of these actually work properly. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and I don't know who was the last person responsible for this, to put it nicely. Uh, dash C uh, dash H capital, I think this, yeah, let's try that. Are there D-Trace users among us? There's me well, yeah. who uses it to work, <laughs> but I'm very As sad in, with the scenario here. Hint, hint, John Santiago, have you spent much time with D-Trace? It's been a number of years, okay. sorry. No, don't be sorry. <laughs> yeah, I get you. So, at a bare minimum, Antronic, let's draft a PR to get it in the on the radar. Otherwise, it's academic and will rot away even further. So, and you've got some more syntax coming. Yes. Okay. Hopefully in a sec. Awesome. Hopefully. So I could check my machine, but I detached my network interface. And <laughs> I thought it would tell me it's busy, but it did not, which is a surprise because it's inversely telling me a not so busy device is busy. So I need to spend more time with that to debug or at least verify the issues of pass through on AMD. And while you're doing that academic question, so is PCI pass through usable in any way out, outside of Beehive? Like, I don't know if Zen supports it in some way. Um, and by extension, I know that there are these uh, P Sun branded four port PCI cards that freak out many systems. And I'm wondering if one could hypothetically mask it out and not have the issues unless they're electrical. So. Just an open question there. I have a little note here. No. I don't want to lose track of that question that doesn't need to be answered today. So um, can I get a restatement of the question? Something's not working with pass through. What exactly is not working? AMD hardware seems to be explosive ah amd okay do you have any amd in your mix because i know I santiago do does and i do i do not i'm sorry no don't, no don't I'll apologize shut up. <laughs> don't I'll, shut up. I'll shut up <laughs> so yeah uh, uh and first we santiago and i chase down if it's the same report that people are seeing let me try and mark away there so um this pr and this PR, which might be broad, com. so not working. And Santiago, you definitely saw this. Like you tried BIOS booting, and it then uh, gave you trouble. I thought anything like this would immediately have trouble. But no, there seem to be situations where it works for a bit and then doesn't, which is quite surprising. Um, completely yeah. broken in thirteen one. Even that's. I thought you were having good luck on thirteen one. Yeah. 13.1 is rock solid. I'm testing it right now. I just put some iperf running yeah. between VMs with iperf. Uh, no issues at all. Uh, but with 13.2, as soon as you try to pass the devices, the virtual machine starts booting. And then on the host OS, you start seeing uh, other mix. Like I have the, on the same server, I have Intel and Broadcoms. The Broadcom start timing out. It says that it cannot connect to the device anymore, the PCI. The same for the NVMe, cannot reach the NVMe anymore. And then, the, of course, the, the 
the hostel is and scratching up. Mm. Yeah, only when doing PCI pass through and on 13.2 and in current on both of them. It happens. Oh, but in dot one goes goes okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh that is concerning and it would seem certain testing infrastructure is not using AMD. So I will personally try to spin that up. I I think I've worked out what issues I was having. Uh but briefly on Broadcom, Santiago, you say you have a work at, around just to work the the uh, the driver back after one uh, one uh, commit. All right. I, yes, that's and I the don't same know if you identified the commit there, but you just had a piece of syntax like, "Hey, chop this out." I think. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a diff on the on the um, PR. Okay. Yeah, comment this. Thirteen dot one is okay, but then thirteen dot two and current also they have the latest commit from commit from Broadcom, and they okay. just destroy the VLAN handling on the on the nick. Ah, that okay. So on Broadcom, thir thirteen dot one is okay, correct? Yeah. Okay. Thirteen dot one is one is okay. Thirteen dot one is okay. Uh, then I shift into discussion progress. Uh, what I meant by shift it with 13.2. Is there any probability that this is PIE related? Sorry, that is. Can um, you repeat that? I believe there's a new option for uh, in the source build for M. I believe it's MK PIE or something. Um, uh, position independent executables. What if you built world oh. and without PIE and uh, checked it? Well, the, when when you try to create a VLAN, it says that it cannot program the hardware filters on the NIC. Um, so it, it says at that point. Um, I haven't checked with PI, uh, PIE disabled, but I, I can give it a try. That would impact a network driver? I'm still I, running, so I apply the patch. Sorry, I, I apply apply the patch, and then I can I'm running it, the the same driver, let's say with the. I just remove the the, the filters that they change on the NIC, and then I have the defaults. I think PII now is enabled by default and it's it's working fine. But I can try well, if you. Working fine was thirteen point one, or you said was some workaround. Yeah, thirteen point one. Um, okay. Anything else related to that? And it sounds like you've been talking to their engineers or your team has at Broadcom. That yeah. sentence is out of order. And super briefly on that related point, does anyone present know the difference between the Intel drivers in base and the ones in ports? Are they simply newer ones in ports? Because yesterday we talked about inverse situations where something works with the in base driver, but not the port one or vice versa, which is a bit unfortunate. The um, port driver is typically a slightly older version of what's available on the Intel website. Older, no kidding, okay. Well, yeah, they have to post it to the Intel website and once it's posted, then we build the, the, we create the package to download it and build it in the port. Okay, so that workflow is, let's see, uh, ports can be older than in, say, current, correct? Ports can it, be, ports can be older than what's available on the Intel website. Oh, I see. So the one in ports is pulled from directly from the Intel website, correct? Yeah. So okay. I, I took the one in ports and we are the, the one at the same that is one dot something dot fourteen. The problem is I, I think the, the question that we were asking with with um Michael yesterday was what's the difference with the if I excel in the kernel that it comes with the kernel and the one that, that is from Intel. Is it the same code or because we have the port, the ports that is available that you can use a Intel driver or the one that it comes with the kernel. Yeah, so I'm not sure what's the difference um, between them. 
So the kernel one is pulled from the same spot or at a different frequency as a vendor software or something? Um, I'm not sure I can answer the complete question. Okay. For me, typically, the kernel, the, the driver that we have internal to FreeBSD is typically an older driver that we have uh, that we have coded on. Okay. And debating on depending on who supports it, those those coding changes. Hello. Okay. So, Anthony, did you have some more output to post? I'm, I'm on a different spot in the doc, and maybe I missed it. Let's see. No, no, I haven't posted yet. Okay. Cool. Apparently, apparently, it's also different on which version of FreeBSD you are. Of course. Okay. Cool. Okay. Well, and yeah, John, you might have your hands full, but uh, that's a valid question of what are those sort of chains to watch of how a driver gets from say intel to freebsd and that's interesting about um bah, bah, bah. the fact that there might be freebsd specific changes that either perhaps aren't made it made haven't made their way to a port or otherwise yeah there doesn't appear to be a a uh there does not appear to be a similar process for all drivers versus the vendor. Some are more current, some are not. That's just the way it's been ever since I can remember. Yeah, understood. Okay, let's see. Um, SRIOV issues appear to be also on Intel. Now, uh, I made a comment here updated on 15th. I guess the uh, PR is updated. So, uh, John, I recall you being burned by SRIOV issues. I've never been burned by the one that's being referenced. Ah, good to know. Let's take a look. Yeah, okay. And Santiago, are you using SRIOV or simply pass through that's getting? Yes. Well, both of them, yeah. Okay. We have some issues with SRIOV only with the Intel driver, the one from ports on version 14, that is the latest one. I think they released one yesterday. Um, but that, that goal. We, we, we found the fix, so we need uh, somebody, I think, Eric or somebody from Intel just to, to commit the fix. Uh, but yeah. Is this you reference by right? PR? That is a PR. Let me check the number oh. one sec. Thank you. Um, is 272? Yeah. 828. Eight. Uh, that might be new. Let's see. Yeah, um, I made that one this I think last week. But they're all they're all I think almost the same. Almost. Not the same. Let's take a look. Kernel panic with SRILV. Yeah, okay. Um updated when. Sorry, I'm gonna fly ahead here. So updated by you on the 14th. Excellent. So you ba, 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 related to yeah. you. Okay. So when it creates uh, the, VD, the VS is just calling the get cap 
capability from the NIC and is sending a null, so it crashed. And somebody suggested to add a, to check if it was null and return. I think there is a patch on the top. Um, okay. And with that patch, it's, it's working well. It's working, okay. Um, Got it. One thing, yeah, at the end when you unload the driver, it's saying that there is a memory leak. I have no clue what is this, what is happening, but I haven't checked on honestly. honestly. Yeah. Okay, thank you. We can do this. <laughs> um, the driver reports a memory leak. Okay. Um, MC0, not a surprise, not a thing. I'll look into this one. Do, 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 do. Sorry, Daniel, Michael, the, one, go ahead. The, the Milanox, yeah, the MC. Yes, yes. It, it's not a bad, yeah, it's by design. It's like that. So I, I replied to that, to that PR yesterday. So they cannot put a and it's RIOV inside the bridge if the SRIOV or the virtual function does not support to be promised. And the Melanox, as far as I know, on FreeBSD doesn't allow to do that. Um, so it will never work on a bridge. Okay. Um, an SRIOV device will never work on a bridge, you say? With Melanox, at least on FreeBSD, no. In Intel, on the IXL, you can set that virtual function. You can put it in promise. So it will receive frames with different MAC addresses uh, into the VF, into the virtual function. But with Melanox, no. Okay. And I know in Linux you can do it, but like I, I was trying yesterday on FreeBSD and I couldn't make it. So it needs promiscuous mode, you say? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So, I wouldn't, is that a feature per se, or it's just not supported? Yeah. Okay. Uh, on Intel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Daniel, did you make the observation that the precise mouse pointing has is still an issue and will always be an issue? May I ask a question? Yeah, please, absolutely. What are we trying to plug? I'm assuming we're plugging the VF into the bridge. What? What? Are we, what's the target configuration? I'm not sure. In this VR. Yeah. Well, let's first let's do a quick look at it. Bring it over and can't be pain notes on the VF. And minimally, does he have the IP address assigned to the bridge and not the VF? Um, with Unless virtual functions, there is no uh, bridge involved. It all happens in the device. Yeah. As what I understood is that they are creating a bridge. They are putting a virtual function inside the bridge, and then they put a VM or a jail interface in the bridge. And of course, then... I, I did. I replicated the scenario yesterday. So if you do a TCP dump, you see the interface, the packets going out of the MCE as expected. But of course, it's not receiving nothing because that MAC address, the one on the on jail or the one on the VM, it doesn't correspond to the VF. So the VF will drop that. It will not accept or receive that that frame. Um, so the, the the concept is wrong. You are putting a VF inside a bridge. Is it? It is not for that. So well, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something here, but I don't know your target environment. It doesn't make sense to me why you would take a VF and plug it into a bridge. You would Typically, you'd want to take the VF and inject it directly into the virtual machine. You're actually adding additional code path to have both the VF and the bridge. I, I agree. He's, he's, he's not mine. You would do that. A good 
a use case to do that is if you run out of virtual functions, you can use the last one as a bridge member and then attach uh, TED devices for lower speed virtual machines. To them. And why not just put the PF in the bridge? Yeah. Maybe because you want to have the VFs for the bigger, more important VMs. But yeah, it's a contrived use case. Yeah, I agree. Uh, is the link state on the physical interface of the first virtual one up? Maybe it's just that the foo is disabled. Can you so, uh, share the a link to the output from IF config? So yeah, so I just PR, yeah. correct? Yeah, I don't know who is there. ECP down. Okay, uh, 25 gig and link up. Okay, that's not right. Yeah, but, but, but again, there is nothing wrong. Yeah, it's expected that that will happen. The behavior he's describing, it will happen. Uh, it could also be a problem. Say, oh, did he assign a forced MAC address to the VF? If he did that, it couldn't be used uh, the other bridge member uh, addresses. The F would then be locked to a single MAC address, which would explain why it doesn't work for sending. Exactly, it works for sending, not for receiving. Yeah, so uh, because again, that that BF is not in promise. So, and on the MC driver, you cannot do it as far as I know. You cannot turn it into into promise mode. Uh, Santiago, would you be willing to relay that? Information that with them to the user. Yeah, I put it. I, I put it yesterday on the on the PR. I put it so effectively the same information. I, yeah, I put okay. the same information. Yeah, just so it's clear. Okay, uh, things like the MAC address. Yeah, yeah, and I show the capabilities there of the card. Yeah, so if you can see the one under that you are showing there, the IXL allows you to do promise. Yeah, but for the Broadcom, excellent. Uh, you can. Sorry for the. Um, Melanox, you cannot do it. I check on the code also if it doesn't show anything to do like promise. Excellent, thank you. Uh, he is so perhaps there are documentation questions here fundamentally. But, uh, I'm afraid maybe not even the driver often knows the expected behavior. Cool. Welcome, Jan, by the way. I don't know if you've been following yeah. along the doc, but we've covered a lot of ground, and John's provides some excellent diagnosis, diagnostic information. Um, where... Uh, do follow along. I do have your name on a few things here, but uh, I don't know if you uh, want to jump in with things like that's that. Da, 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 da. So, uh, Antonik, how are you coming with that output? Um, currently that. good. So okay. I've somehow by accident while I was trying to reproduce my steps. Yes. I ended up finding this nice blog post. Um, I'm going to put it right here. Uh, where they've also had a similar issue while using Apache's mod dtrace, because Apache does provide a dtrace model, although I'm not sure if that's being used for now. That's been a long time, you know. Um, <clears throat> so uh, they also had a similar issue, specifically on the regs x86.d file inside the user lib dtrace directory and what they did is they just moved some files away and now it's working fine on their system that was i'm assuming when was version 9 of freebsd like a decade ago um so that was their solution there and everything else that i'm trying to reproduce my steps is actually bringing me back to uh the source code of dtrace literally the source code of dtrace so i'm having a hard time trying to 
to understand that last output that I found, unfortunately. But these are the files and these are the problems that we're having. And uh, the, 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 the simplest one to see is here. So I'll paste that as well. Okay. Uh, this is the simplest oh. provider, which is right here, right? So we see that um, when we run the IP.d, which is a provider as well in the Dtrace language, let's put it that way, uh, it, it gets type redeclared, which is packet info. Why is that getting declared? Where is um, it getting declared? Are Again. you sure your, D, your sources... Uh... It's so like are all properly updated. Not that we do have the uh, .d files on an old release or something like that on an upgraded system. If you manage Sorry, to reproduce this on a fresh installation, uh, this is on a fresh installation of fourteen, whatever the snapshot was that I installed from. Maybe the snapshot is not very done. Yeah, right. It could but just we're be having some temporary but, uh, breakage. Oh, no, 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 no. I have the same issue on 13.2 and 13.1. Oh. Yeah. Not good. Yeah. And just to confirm, I'll go to a fresh 13.1 right now, as in without even the patch layers and uh, dash S, let's say IP.D. Yep. All, oh, yeah. Again, exactly the same error. So nothing has been changed there for a long time. And um, there is a dash H capital H flag in Dtrace that should print the um, the processing of, of that that's been done by CPP, but I've, I'm not able. I'm having a hard time getting that output. I don't know. I mean, it's in the manual. I run it, but it's not showing anything. Am I doing something wrong? I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, there is a uh, the dash H flag. That the, the, there's dash H. Yeah, dash H capital. I'll fix that by the way on the yeah. here. Yeah, as well. good. Uh, shows pre-processing. Uh, oh. Yes, it shows the the, the pre-processing uh, okay. steps being Got done it. by the trace. Thank you. Uh, Antonik, at a bare minimum, let's formulate a PR just so that it gets yeah. out there. And, and I noticed there is yeah. a D-trace tracker. So in theory, yes. And the FYI, I don't know what this directory is. Like, I, I maybe this is like not needed anymore. Maybe this is implemented somewhere else now. So, but the code yeah, is there. No, and... This directory is still needed. It's the .d files declaring the structs and how to print them and so on. Yeah. And uh, Michael, we found this thanks to your OCAM BSD. You know, I just hey, put the bare minimum amounts of D-trace, and this is what it spit out. But so. <laughs> it could be if you're running old scripts that uh, the old scripts using it are, are no longer working. So basically, mm -hmm. um, D-trace goes so low into the system that there is no compatibility guarantee for old scripts which deeply interact with the system. Well, does this break with other example scripts in the released OS? I don't know. Because Antoinette, if, if you jump into, I assume, and share I, some other examples. I'll put it in another remember way. Correctly, um, yeah. So uh, I'll put it from our company's point of view. We've been doing, we've been using our same scripts since 20, I want to say 17. And uh, I don't know what has changed in this directory or if it has not, but it has never affected us. So our scripts from uh, five years ago, they've been working fine without any breakage over the years, right? That that, that would be the right term to say. Uh, that The same goes also with the third party D-Trace utilities like D-Watch, right? Uh, even before D-Watch was in base, uh, you bring old D-Watch to the new system, it all works fine, including the D-Watch uh, plugins that imports like the D-Watch JSON. Also, yeah. that De Devon she hasn't changed that in a long time, and it all it's all working fine on. So D Watch is working, so, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, even even okay. the old uh, quote unquote unmaintained scripts from you know five Branding six years break. ago yeah. they're also working. Yeah. So if D Watch is working, maybe your scripts are out of date, possibly. My scripts are also working fine. These are the scripts uh, that are coming with FreeBSD. Oh, the, okay, got it, free got BSD. it. So, okay. Yeah. Oh, that wasn't clear. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try to open a PR or even to understand what the PR should be. Like, hello, 
this is not working, but what does it do in the first place? <laughs> Fair enough. So, um, well, how did you first encounter this being broken? Your own company scripts? And uh, no, with OCAM BSD. I, oh, I, when okay. we were doing OCAM, I enabled DTrace. I saw what files have changed. These are the files that it got spit out. Uh, specifically, only two of them, by the way, just the, the mbuff and one more. I think it was the air now. Nope, not the air now, the IO, uh, because we disabled everything else in OCAM, right? So only okay. two of them spit out. I'm like, what is this directory? And I start digging, and um, this is this is what we got. Uh, so this could I, be I tried a, testing all of them. This could be a build option issue that something is maybe not correctly included or excluded. Uh, well, th they are based on the build options. So when we yeah. were building a free BSD using OCAM and we disabled the networking, the TCP and the UDP were not there. The, the files. Oh, okay. So then that sounds correct. Okay. Yeah. So as, as whoever uh, did the make files in the build system, it, it's, it's aware of like the TCP files for networking, UDP, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Okay. But uh, I encountered them by accident. And I just try to see what they do, and I still can't don't understand what they do. Uh, I understand Jan's point of view, which in here are the providers, for example, which are the mapping of the structs of the kernel to the dtrace structs. So the uh, uh, anyone else can do a process, let's say inspection. So, but but if it's that if if are those the most um, updated ones, or did we move it to somewhere else in the system? But the old files are still there. That's why there's the breakage. So are those like just like legacy files? Uh, or are those the actual files, but they're not working? But somehow they are doing some. They are somehow they, they are working without breaking my company's script. So I, again, I, I I have no idea what this is. Um, maybe we should who ported the trace? Maybe we should ask someone whoever whoever did most of the work. You know, not, not the, the the developers, not just the uh, users. GNN maybe. So I forget. George. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll don't ask. Know. Okay. Well, uh, Jan, any other insights or questions relating to that? And enjoy CCC. Uh, just if it works, it's an older release, like 12.4, where it still works. Does one of the versions work? Okay. So if you notice, if you have the diff, can you just unapply the diff uh, to invert it and then see if it works again? So maybe you won't there get is some can be SD on twelve, unfortunately. Go ahead. Okay, but uh, then yeah, but it should just if you take a release ISO and install it, should does it work? And some of it, the .d script, if I remember correctly, they only support stuff. You're not supposed to just invoke them as is. You're supposed to just import them. Maybe you have to import another one first, like you have to import this header and then this one. Basically, okay. so maybe just be that the other something is missing, which has to be included first. Thank you, Jan. Cool. Yeah, this is but, niche uh, enough. Can also so be be a uh, bit rot, and you finally caught it. In that case, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and it's okay to send in a bug report as I've encountered this problem, and I don't know how to continue myself. Yep. You don't have to send in a ready to commit patch to be allowed to report a bug. Oh, okay. Or even to understand what the problem actually is. Yeah. Just to, of course, let them know everything you do know. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that said, uh, Jan, I don't know if you have an interest in, for example, these uh, two, this Linux compat compatibility question that Not might really. allow for nginx support as i recall or one of them was yeah here this nginx God. welcome josh i'm uh, not familiar with all the epol details so i can't really help you there just that uh, yeah with effects nginx oh. and maybe other things which were like but, uh, Joshua, welcome. I will shoot you the doc we are staring at. Or did you come and go? Maybe you came and went. No, I'm here. Great. So take a look at that Google Doc in chat. Uh, we went through some pretty deep 
IXL network debugging, John, who's present, had some excellent insights on, say, NUMA domains. And uh, uh, let me point you to some of the key points here. Uh, this section I've got on screen, and we talked about yeah. tracking your hyper-threading pairs and seeing from your D message output that what domain the device is on and chasing it down with yeah. other components. Go ahead, Jan. Yeah, it's just a bit too quick to follow in the screen cap. Uh, uh, yeah, it was a long discussion before both of you joined. <laughs> Sorry about that, but the, it is recorded for your viewing pleasure. And uh, sure. do you jump in with any questions if you come across them, but uh, output such as this was very helpful to chase down, I'm sorry about the scrolling, uh, chasing down context switches, which are super high for Santiago when building world on yeah. 12, 13, uh, 13, two versus one. Go ahead, John. Young. Yeah, okay. Exactly, involuntary context switches versus voluntary ones, yeah. And Jan, actually, let's just quickly do Santiago's question. He's seeing that build world on 13.2 has a like significantly more context switches than 13.1. Santiago on the same machine? Yeah, yeah on the same machine. So actually, what, the machine was doing nothing on 13.2. Uh, no, you cut out the Jan. Yeah. It's uh, thirteen dot two. Just you're cutting out like crazy. I think the CCC actions are hacking. Development got even worse. You think it might be a clang issue? I'm on a campground. Yeah. Is uh, this a DFS based system? Santiago, are you using DFS? Yes, correct. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> what might reach into that just the way it's doing every. Uh, oh, and by the way, are you doing something like using tempfs to, for your output and object directory? So um, the machine was doing, was doing nothing actually in 13.2, uh, as far as I know. Um, and you know, today when we start testing, Michael, yeah. uh, I check on Savix. Savix was showing around 400,000 context switches per second. Then I trust the wood machine into 13.1. And even when we start building on 13.1, I start building Word. Uh, it was reaching 80K, no more than that. But I don't know why 13.2 was so high. I will do more ring around, try to, to see what was going on. Uh, as far as I know, that machine was not being used for anything else. That's what I was asking. Um, that we know, I know the answer now. How to monitor the context switches per per process? Oh, it definitely but, helps. But, can, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, we covered a lot of ground, and again, uh, Joshua and Jan, feel free to read through this and watch the video that I'll try to ha have up ASAP. But we've touched on just about everything, short of some exotic things like TPM pass through. No one's present. Uh, I'll you wanted that to issue. Go ahead. Ask me about something about jails before I joined the call, but I'm not sure what it was, sir. So there are two issues, and I don't know if Jan didn't sound, sound, seem like he cared, but it was ignore this to. Uh, offer better support, I believe, for Nginx under Linux compatibility. Yes, that's correct. So let's see, when was this? Some guy responded long ago in 2022. <laughs> and then fast forward to May, here we go. He's created a review for it. Let's take a look at that. I've linked it in the doc. May of 20... Yes. I kept... Okay, Mark. So, so this is the uh, K event conversion to ePoll regarding a uh, flag that's being used for things such as Nginx. 
Um, and if we if this one gets merged, it means that we can run Linux as Nginx on FreeBSD. Um, I, I haven't tested this patch. Has anyone have? Because this would save us a lot of time for converting Docker stuff to FreeBSD jails. Or Linux jails, to be specific, actually. FreeBSD yeah. Linux jails. Having Mark Johnson comment yesterday is extremely encouraging. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Reading region. Looks like a provider. semantics. Provider. Okay. Hey, that's uh, that's progress. I'll take it. So I would expect him to, to, to at least modify K node in such a way to learn something. Okay. Great. Hey. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. I copy exactly that. Thank you, sir. Um, okay, yeah, and Jan's comment is a very good one. Don't just ignore flags if you don't know, you know, their meaning, because that that is actually an option to literally ignore uh, the. Uh... I think the difference is that if you poll exclusively, only one of the polling threads is woken up, so it's like a signal all versus signal many, a signal one versus signal many uh, on a condition variable. But I'm not certain. That's a very valid point. But uh, I mean, uh, we've talked about this with Daniel as well, that uh, uh, if this one does get solved, we would be able to run Nginx. And not only, there are actually other, like Caddy is also very famous for that, which is a very common web server there as well. Uh, to, to run them. And uh, this is actually a, a problem that comes from Linux packages, to be honest. So you can uh, choose the Nginx selector uh, in the Nginx configuration. So you can tell it to use ePoll or Poll uh, or Select or uh, KEvent or KQ. And there's also support for whatever Sun uh, Solaris uses. I think I, I forgot the name. I remember it in a bit. Uh, and you can choose that. But the way that they compile Nginx on Linux distributions such as Debian, etc., they don't compile these features in. They not even the oldest cool poll is compiled in Nginx. They only compile with ePoll. Uh, Linuxism to the, you know, to the to the max basically. Um, so if, if they didn't do that, we would have been able to use the Linux Nginx on FreeBSD easily, um, but they don't. So, okay. so as a workaround, you can build it with a different flag, is that correct? Yes, you can okay. build it with the, yeah, and uh, ironically, the default is to include everything, by the way. Huh. Okay. <laughs> like they, they, yeah, they, they choose to disable it, you know? Hmm. Thank you. Well, it's an it's a workaround. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. So there's that. Um, oh. Yeah. Anything else jails related that I can help with? Absolutely. I found what the uh, flag does and uh, quoted it from the uh, Stack Overflow thread. I found it in. Uh, you found a post relating to it. I see your text there. Comments. Oh, thank you. Uh, will this be our first Stack Overflow post in these minutes? Okay. Uh, no, this post. Okay. Oh, my apologies for whatever advertisements you're about to see, but okay. Oh, they're advertising themselves. That's cool. Okay. It's not a good sign of business, but okay. Hey, okay, well. <laughs> Well, yesterday it was the next tech tip. Okay. Uh, <laughs> to answer your question, Antrenig, uh let's see on jail. Academic question. Daniel, are you still around? I don't know if there's ever a, a use case for wine in a jail, but someone had issues. Just saying. It was a mailing list. Yeah, post. I saw your, I saw uh, your notes about that. Bang, bang. Just academic question. I think question. one of the reasons... Yep. Why it crashes is that you're normally not allowed to map the null address. So, so allow, virtual allow address would address work. Close to zero are not allowed to uh, be mapped. 
32 bit wine require you to M map virtual address zero or very close to it, and FreeBSD prevents this so that you don't accidentally hit valid memory mappings when you're referencing something relative to an L pointer. Yeah, where is the CDL to allow that? Yeah, I was going to ask that. I, I think there's like as a is it M log. And, uh, uh, is that the comment for the P thread count signal? Is that related to this pecond rather? Uh, Jan, what is this relating to this or? Uh, Nginx. To, uh, it's related to Wine 32 bit not working. This one. Okay, cool. And what's the sys control, we think? I'm just looking for it. Oh, I don't remember awesome. which it was. Okay. Thank you. I bet everyone here is testing Zen, right? Right? I'll try to spin that up. <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, I worked very hard to get that the port completed, and I haven't talked to Roger in a long time. I mean, you, you, you the Beehive team has made Beehive so good that I even forgot that we had Zen. I know, but there's like bio support and other things. So it has, a, in theory, use cases. Um, ba, 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 ba. Jan, someday you'll write, rewrite the entire tap interface and all that. But that's not today for 14. <laughs> um, um, being insane, I might dig up the NE2000 code. And there are a whole bunch of documentation issues. But it, this might not be the call for that. And uh, Michael, we didn't do a jail call yesterday, technically. So can I bring the good news about the FreeBSD journal? Uh, yes, but I sure hope I didn't beat you to it in this references note uh yeah. docs we have permission <laughs> this one yes yes, yes sir. So. so i talked with the foundation uh two good news uh number one any freebsd journal article can be copied to the wiki and they understand that the freebsd journal while it's awesome a lot of things are not indexable so uh and I, who I is that at the foundation remind me uh, greg great thank you thank you greg very much uh, now we have permission to uh, to to publish the articles or republish them technically into the wiki as long as we attribute, you know, first appeared on the FreeBSD Foundation Journal. That's number one. Uh, and number two is all the future uh, FreeBSD journal, uh, journal, journal, journal issues. Yes, I, I know American. Uh, next FreeBSD journal issues are going to be published in HTML as well. So they are going to be indexable on the web and uh, it will help a lot of people to find more content. So uh, if anyone wants to move articles uh, from the journal uh, archives uh, to the wiki or even the handbook doesn't matter where you're uh, which side of the project you're porting into uh the, 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 there are no copyright issues as long what as about we give, as long as we give credit okay what about like syntax from an article or do they strictly want articles to show up with uh, oh no it, it doesn't matter what it is apparently Great. thank so, you like, you know <laughs> yeah my, my, my example was actually that. daniel's article Yep. Daniel, I think you wrote it like two yes. years ago about FreeBSD Cloud and also an article from, I think it was last year about VXNet. And both of them are, you know, they have text as well as live examples of, of how to run things. And yeah, anything and everything can be copied. And I just hope that our wiki supports image upload. I'm not, I, I haven't seen images in our wiki before because there are very good di diagram is the right yep. word? Diagrams, uh, yep. diagrams, diagrams in the journal. So maybe we can move those as well for uh, other people to see what what the, you know, what the we're talking about in the, in the wiki. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Excellent. Thank you for bringing that up with him. And Luke, Michael Lucas will bring that up at the next editorial meeting, but that will happen whenever it happens. So thank you. That is That has sped things thank you. along. And thank you to the foundation for organizing that in like a matter of a day. <laughs> yeah, and I will even quote you, Jan. Uh, I will put this in quotes. Finally. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. uh, I don't think I want to get into a actual doc triage, but uh, we did bring up the 
jail manual page yesterday. Jamie hasn't had a chance yes. to look at it. Dave is tied up. So um, if there's some super handy corrections, for example, with the RC dot the RC relationship that John Mark Gurney pointed out. Yeah, I, I, I have a I have a question. Yes, sir. So 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 um uh here here here's what I'm having problem with. Yes. Uh I know all the internals of the RC script at this point, and there are a lot of flags in there that are not documented, by the way, not in RC conf nowhere else, etc. And they are very good flags. Some of them are actually usable. And my, my question is, uh, where do I document these? Is inside rc.conf or do I make a new man page for like the jail service? Like what's uh, what's what's the playbook here? I, I've never been in a scenario where the, the binary as in jail eight and the script as running it as in the jail service, they actually do not totally different things, obviously, but they operate a bit differently. And then there is the second part of the problem, which is I'm a new user to FreeBSD. I want to play around with this. Some people who come from Linux, they would think that they should use the uh, uh, jail command, but you know, rc.conf.d, it works better, not, not only rc.conf.d, everything else regarded to the files. So the jail.conf, jail.glob.conf, and jail.conf.d.glob.conf, all of them work better with the service. So you know we're, it's it's kind of not in a good position right now, and I'm I'm in to you know dedicate a month of my life to get this fixed, but I need kind of a cons consensus is a consensus you know, word. <laughs> consensus. Yes, sir. Thank you. So you very much had with like Goran and company, and maybe even uh, oh in Iran. Uh, jl.conf.d issues are those mechanically resolved and we're on to documentation issues or are there uh, faraz are you still having uh mechanical issues or is it just doc issues anyway so 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 from our perspective as in me and faraz and uh, yes the, the, our company we don't care because we're running jailer and uh, in case of jailer we patch the jail service to our own needs we it's like five lines of change but it's very ugly hence we're not actually it's upstream in the sense there is a diff for it but it's never it should never be merged it's a very bad code right we're basically so for the rest typing of us, to the jail command okay yeah, for the rest we, of us we should not do that <laughs> yeah. so for the rest of us my idea was that the jail service should be rewritten to not support jail.conf.d now but rather, we should have a, a jail.conf.sample or example that uh, that would, you know, that would tell users um, that would tell users to use the include. Now, Jan, I know about our Pola issues, uh, but I'm sorry, man, like the initial change was bad. The, when I added the jail.conf.d, uh, it everyone said it's working fine, but then there was like this one percent of users where everything broke for them. So I'm I'm not sure how we're gonna go with this. Again, I, like I'm said, if if there's a consensus, I will love to fix all of the issues. Um, Oak get the breakage into fourteen. I'll, I'll <laughs> I mean, we might get even more delayed. So yeah, uh, th th that that's my problem here right now is how do we how do we get it how do we get it to get fix for everyone kind well, of yet mechanically not documentation correct yes yes so what, not just documentation you, but you recap actual the actual uh, mechanical issue at hand is it a yes. balance between jail command rc and rc D? go mm -hmm. ahead so the actual only problem the practical problem with jail.conf.d also known as the current state of jail service is that it doesn't understand depends. Oh, okay. And number two, the issue that not everyone is going into it, I mean, they're used to it, is that um, is that uh, if you want to enable a jail, you have to set that you want to enable it, uh, aka jail underscore list in RCConf. So if you want the jail named... Um, next cloud to be booted, you have to list it in jail underscore list. Those are the issues. Now, again, number two is not my issue, is not is not a problem that I created because it was there from the jail.glob.conf days. 
way before my I started playing around with the code. So it's, it's been there for a long time. That's why I'm calling it not a problem because um, be, because users have were used to it anyways, right? So this this is the actual problem with the service. So now the wait, clarification. Hold on. Um, if you put something in jail.conf.d, it must also be in the list to be recognized? Yes. Got it. Thank you. Yes. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, in, inside the parentheses, it should be jail.glob.conf. Uh, yeah, I've never heard of that one. Okay. Yeah, glob.conf, <laughs> of course. Yes. Uh, Jan, are you in a position to... Uh, you had one more thing, Antrenig, and then I'd love just Jan's concise response. <laughs> Was there a yes. three or not a three? There is no three. Okay. However, yes. the the current best solution, if we put Pola aside, is to tell users to move to the dot include. The current best solution is to tell users to move to, 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 to the dot include. Everything else is doable, but it's ugly. As in, you know, the mechanical code is yeah. going to be very ugly, such as piping to STDN. So it's it that, that that of the jail command. So yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. However, people, will that it will that previous functionality break, or it's just why are you no. still using that? No, the pre uh, the, the, the the piping actually does solve all of the problems, except that it's ugly. And the the major problem is going to be with the piping is that if something doesn't work, right? If something doesn't work, it's going to tell you you have a problem on line one hundred ninety four. But you have no JL file that is, you know, 194 right. li lines long because you know it's it's catting and piping. So yeah. th th that's the problem with that solution. Who's uh, doing that the most? Is base doing that or just outside tools? The 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 uh, the, the, the piping. piping. Yeah, who's doing this uh, right off the bat? Only jail only jailer does that, and we uh -oh. we are we are, we are okay with that because we are generating the you know the config config files. So you're taking pride in it or you're not. Anyway, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jan, are you in a position to give your quick executive summary on your thoughts? Like, jail, that compass 200 lines. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if I should copy your chat in or just hear from you as a summary. Jan is at CCC, so uh, on a campground. And so his connectivity might be limited. That's Germany, my man. His connectivity is gonna be more than in his house. <laughs> No cup. Yeah, exactly. So, Jan, are you in a position to talk and chat with us and give us your overview? And, John, I understand why you'd have to drop off. Uh, too many devices on Wi-Fi. Okay. Uh, overview of your feedback. You think there are polar issues if we encourage people to use the new dot .include functionality. But if I'm not mistaken, any current behavior will be is working in 14 if you're you know using old easy jail it should work correct or incorrect so Paul, uh, Jan thinks it's okay on to to break quote unquote on a major release okay um that's his point of view and I I, I also agree by the way I also agree uh, uh, sorry, Jan, by major, do you mean like 14.1 is also okay? Or you right. mean that 14 and patch is not okay? No, 14.1 is not okay. Okay. Yeah. Not just the, okay. Cool. Okay. Okay. That's too many okays. Take a <laughs> shot if you're watching. Okay. So, is the, do we have a mechanical issue or just documentation issues? Full by circle. the current standard, by the current standard yes. that we are in, in, in current, yep. these problems can be solved by documentation, as in telling users that if you do this, expect that. Like, if you want to depend, then don't use this or that feature. That might be a good solution uh, to tell the users what to expect in which scenario. When you say depend, we're, that's not the include? That's not the include. That's the depend. Okay. There's a depend option. Yeah. So like if you use include, here's how to use that properly. If you use, uh, put it in the bugs section of the man page. Thank you, Jan. That's a very good one. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I think Apple loves the bugs section. Literally every utility they have has a bugs section. Um, so um, is it yeah, as simple the, as this? Clarify depend versus depend include. Depend versus include in which scenario, who does what. Yes. Okay. Because those words could be synonymous. 
synonyms in yes. some circumstances. And yeah, I totally get how a new user will get confused as hell. Yes. So my question, yes. just to close this up. Yes. I want to document what the jail service does. Not the jail command, but what the jail service does. Where should I document this? I can just sit and write it somewhere for users to know how it's working internally. But where should I write this inside? Not definitely, it's not going to be in the jail command document. I mean, I I don't know. That's the problem. I really don't know. In rc.conf, in rc.conf. Okay. Uh, five. Okay. Section five for file formats. Okay. Do you want me to have like jail in section five? Well, no. Okay. Not that. Got it. Are you sure that's not chat GPT we're talking to? Jan, are you chat gpt <laughs> Are you doing Jedi. the GPT? Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Jan GPT. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, GPT. <laughs> That's his normal mode, isn't it? Sorry, I can't Dave, I can't it. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you, Jan. Don't ever change. Okay. Um, Antonik, does that make sense as a solution? That might document yeah, I, it. I think as a I file format does, section. Because all yeah. of the jail yeah. stuff in RCConf are next to each other. Okay. So I think somewhere in there I can put the information like, oh, this is how you do this, this is how you do that, this is how it works internally. That does make sense, I guess. I'll I'll try to work on that. Okay, let's go there. <laughs> Fine, I'll bite jail. And you have to uh, jail. Go 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 go. You got that. It's highlighted jail driver. Da, da, da. Now file section, more, right? A bit yeah. more. A Rock bit and roll. More. And uh, once just, documented, then it might be a question of having a blog post, et cetera, or a journal article. But okay, jail enable, jail. There enable. you go. Here's what. Here it is. Okay. Here it is. So, so there's jail enable. That's the global um, one. You have to have it. So depend is the question, right? Yes. Or not. And we see it's, it's, it's not, no, it's not in there. It, it goes inside the configuration. So if okay. you go a bit up, yep. right? So here is where all the jails and stuff are. Do I have the right to put right to write something before jail enable about jails, or like this has to be in this key value key kind of thing format? You see, so this is how it looks like right now. I'll just for exactly exactly that phrase as a question. Uh, Q W Q. Put, put, uh, put something above, above jail. Yep, that. Did I lose something? Bool. No, I lost something. You lost jail. Well, I lost jail enable. Yes. So this, thank you. Boom. Actually, I like the formatting. Sure. Uh, so command. Actually, the formatting was not bad. Hey, I know. Yeah, it's, 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 it's shocker. Good. It's, good. It's, good. it's good. It's good. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it works. Okay. Okay. That said, um, whose permission do you need? Uh, Jamie's? RC. I think it's the, it should be the, man, the, the documentation team. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't the think they are team. explicitly against documentation that resolves an open issue. <laughs> so, uh, Antrenig, is that actionable enough uh, yeah, uh yes yes great clarification and then yes yes okay absolutely. anything else team we've covered a lot of ground and uh josh joshua if you had a chance to read through any of this and want to talk about you know cpu pinning of i of what is it irqs to cpus and numa domains <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. I think John dropped off and won't be able to answer those questions, but there is some gold here. Absolute gold. Um, that I will draft some syntax for John. We went in depth about these issues, although we are curious about how, say, a Intel driver gets into base rather than ports, because that's a different path, uh, politically rather than uh, 
network wise. Um, SRIOV just got me started. Uh, I ah, fine. I'll go there. Do I have something from Steve Kiernan who promised updates on the nine P client? Do, 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 do. Nope. So I'm waiting on that. He, apparently Juniper has code to to leak out. What? Uh, they have updates to the nine P client that haven't okay. made it outside the organization. I looked at the, their own repo and it hasn't changed in quite some time. So there's that. Okay. Uh, Jan, did your RC script for WireGuard magically get committed by someone? Jan has left the chat and that is not a meme. I mean, that's not a surprise. Really Jan okay. has left the chat <laughs> along with Elvis. Okay, so there's that. Um, Uh, Mina had been talking about the BT net driver. Do we are yes. you following that on Janig? Anything actionable we, there? We, yes, we're also chatting. Uh, I mean, she's doing the work. There's nothing Great. that I can oh, talk about. Excellent. But the, 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 these all have been known issues for a very long time. As a matter of fact, uh, free BSD respecting uh, cloud providers such as Volter, yep. they put the defaults as soon as you boot a free BSD machine. So in their uh, post post install scripts they they do the fixes uh, inside rc.conf so because okay. a lot of users don't know why they were having networking issues but turns out it was um, a driver issue ah, so now mina is defaulting it good to know uh for what it's worth this was on the radar oh 2012 wow yes. let's see where it ended up baby. okay uh 2023 what, April 2012. I, I was in high school. Yeah. And I can confirm that running the following helped work around the issue. The performance. Yes. But the performance is terrible. Ah. Uh, because that's just only Rx CSUM. You also might want to disable TX CSUM, and uh, the uh, list goes on of, yeah. depending what you're using. So. Where, we? um, where is my cursor? I don't know. Here it is. Okay. Uh, I can type. Uh, may want to disable TX. TX. See some. See some. And friends. <laughs> and friends, yeah. Uh, Depending on what you have. Time issue. Okay. Yeah. So that's a, that, and I, I think that whole bucket of networking issues needs better documentation where to be determined, but. That keeps coming up and poor yes. uh, Jason Tupner has fought those for years. Uh, we've lost Jan. He commented last on this review, domain sockets and do to do, do. Decouple Unix domain socket from save restore code. Uh, that's a whole category of save restore code. So that might not be for those present. Where did we leave off? We left off. Oh, sorry, is this about 2021? 2021? Goodness. Yeah, let's not even go there. I didn't say that. <laughs> uh, where did I put that? Quite old. Um, I think, Antronik, you were following these this discussion on FreeBSC update either changing or not changing SSHD count files with John Mark Gurney, perhaps? Is that uh, you? Uh, I, I, I am following, but I don't know where they got. Like, okay. well, I didn't understand. Uh, this is something that I've never seen before. Let's put it okay. that way. Um, oh, Sean Tired. Okay, yeah. Okay, with oh, you know the person. Oh, sure. I know the users, you know the yeah. person. Okay, fine. The Reddit uh, community of FreeBSD is very tiny. Yeah, actually, the Reddit community, the, the FreeBSD community anywhere is very tiny. Oh, modified <laughs> like yesterday. Okay, let me get this ticket in there. One sec. That is good to know. Uh, see that David. 16. Okay. So there is movement. I mean, and if you can't detect the theme here of things just dying on the vine, which one was it? This one modified yesterday. Okay. So instead of ssh.conf, they're modifying ntp.conf. 
no surprise. Let's scroll down. Oh, okay, blah, 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 blah. See this bug, okay, okay, fine. Thank you, Graham. Can you just cover all the bugs that was listed? On the doc or in the search? Because I mean, the search in will the, give in you the a doc. nice... When was this? Add a bug section to FreeBSD update. Yeah, updates. Yeah, that's not helpful. That's yesterday. It's he's in docs, and that's understandable. Um, hmm. Okay, doc question. Talked about Steve K. Uh, doc question. Okay, line thirty two. We talked about that. We talked about that. Um, that's Talk about not Zen. important. Not important. Not important. Uh, Daniel, were you commenting on the fact that the mouse pointer in, say, VNC on FreeBSD on under v Beehive is a mess? It's been a mess forever. Hans Petter Solaski passed away and was one of the people to potentially resolve that. Um, look at that low review number going way oh back God. in time. That's four digits. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, who? It's what? Great. I. Oh yeah, Vicky made that one. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, I think it's I think it's just bad marketing not to have that work. Agreed. That you can't do a GUI like FreeBSD is the only <laughs> VM that you can uh, you can put on Beehive that doesn't have uh, out of the box X uh, tablet mouse support. So the yeah, it's but yeah. it doesn't sound it doesn't sound easy to fix. It sounds right. like that could be a, a money a money issue because it doesn't really benefit anything except for you know basically first install VMs uh free BSD on top of the on top of BI. So, so I think which which mouse is not working? If you you can't yeah, the pointer. Yeah, the pointer doesn't. the The pointer doesn't match. The, the acceleration doesn't work. Um, oh. In in VNC in the built in VNC for BI. Um, so obviously, oh. once you install VNC, once you install whatever, it's no problem. But if you do like a Ghost BSD install or or any of our uh, GUI GUI friends mm -hmm. on Beehive, you don't have a working mouse uh, with the with the console. Um, or you obviously shoot it by a few centimeters and then it lines up with, with, for the best. And it's a with mess. Beehive's VNC. You don't have Correct. it with Beehive's VNC. Okay. That's yeah, that's right. So yeah, and obviously that's that's only gonna be a problem for 99% of people for the first install. So the you know, the 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 priority of something like that is, you know, realistically in the grand scheme of most FreeBSD users being developer and, and operations oriented, it's probably pretty low, but I think it's it's definitely unfriendly from a marketing perspective. Are we certain it's not a problem under other VNC contraptions or Spice or others? I mean, Windows I think it is. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, I think it well, is. I mean, it's a FreeBSD guest. Oh. Right. So consoles, I think, I think KVM console would also have a problem with it. Um, oh, that's a valid question. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that's the case because getting it to, getting it to work with VMware is a little clunky. Because so, I swear someone I, just I, mentioned cloud providers. And if we, someone happens to spin up a, you know, virtualized graphics in any way, shape or form, and that's not working. I'm looking, to look I'm looking at VMware workstation right now. And, uh, the mouse isn't working in the console. Yeah, it should be possible, but the uh, yeah, but a graph, but an X definitely will be a disaster. Um. Yeah, I does do we do we get frame buffer on um on Vulture? I have a couple of Vulture tests because I needed some stuff overseas, so I could spin that up and see if it works there. I would bet not. Um, uh, let's see. So, Vol Volter is 
yeah, without the yeah, San Francisco style. So <laughs> Walter doesn't have frame buffer. They're using the VGA console, uh, even on bare metal. So that is uh, not yeah. the, and frame buffer is requires works on FreeBSD on what do you call that on EFI. So that one right. doesn't work, as far as I know. Although yeah. in our server farm we use EFI everywhere. Maybe I can test there. Maybe I can test that. So in, in yeah. FreeBSD inside the Beehive running with EFI, the VNC mouse isn't working. Okay. Okay. Right. And right. And but and it works with every other operating system that's running inside it's Beehive. Pretty pretty much. Yeah. I, I, I think I mean Alumos and there's but there's some other ones that I, I had the same issue with. But uh, yeah, but uh yeah. Yeah, but we don't know um, if, if the FreeBSD mouse it works everywhere on that layer, as in, you know, Spice. There is also whatever Hyper-V uses. Okay, and now... This I is an XHCI question. And right. It, I can't yeah. imagine it not manifesting somewhere under some sort of... I, I bet you. I bet you it's the same on KVM. And I KVM, Zen. Yeah, I would, I would, I would put money. I would, I would bet. And Vicky commented the long ago, there. here's what she sees. So there are the facts. <laughs> oh, foundation giving demos around the world on VMware Fusion or whatever, but whatever. <laughs> that's a good point. Okay. Okay, that's nice. Plenty. Um, I think we've spent plenty of time. We're at 12 now, Pacific. Uh, docs or docs, maybe take a look through all this. Um, and then, of course, if you're really, really feeling brave, one, I learned that <laughs> MFC kernel Nomicon back, became part of the project. That's cool. Uh, there is a 14 tracker that says nearly nothing. There is a jails umbrella that seems quite out of date. And there is a beehive umbrella that's much more up to date. May I ask course. what the jail umbrella is? Yeah, well, uh, it's in the... I believe reviews in this case, it's anything flag jail, but yes, I believe the last update. Oh wait, July eleventh. So okay, Alan Jude tick tickled a review. As, as far as I know, this is pretty updated because I get email from this group. Okay. And there's something from Jan. If yeah. they've triaged it, great. That's great news. Hey, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm happy to be wrong there. Uh, if we look at the Beehive umbrella, that closer. let's see, Corvin closed his TPM pass-through. I know he had two of those. Hopefully that's the second one. So so what, what do we need to be to have to be admin on, you know, Fabricator for a group at least? I talked to, uh, for closing or for what? You can just have an account and comment, no problem. I would. I'm curious about closing PRs that are like that's a feature that won't happen. Sorry, yeah, it works exactly as it it says it will. I want to close this, but that's quite the challenge. Um, oh, here I was looking straight at it. TBM. Uh, so. Bear with me. I would love to see if Corbin closed. Take your time. Authored by closed. Boom. Yes. Progress. Here we go. In the last now you few have days. Emulation? Uh pass through. Pass through. Committed. Sweet. Great. And yes, there's typically one TPM chip per machine. However, this is like years in the making. Okay, breaking news. Close. updated. Like this is why we need the Microsofts of the planet. They push us to get things better because they suck. Uh, see the commit. Great. Okay, so I'm going to be excited because that's where Hubner found Windows that uh, the, there was a Windows 11 update that might have broken the lab mode. It They may have backpedaled and enabled it again, but nonetheless, it motivated this to move forward. We thank you, Goran. We got the software TPM moving along. And mm -hmm. with this in place, that's, uh, I talked to Goran yesterday. He's looking at what's next to make that work. So 
if we could have QEMU style uh, TPM emulation using pretty much the same mm -hmm. MIT license TPM software TPM, great. Love That's it. also a good one because because whoever's running like FreeBSD on Beehive, uh, we can now also see TPM data as well. In, so you know for like any kind yes. of security booting. Okay, this is also breaking news. So great, that's this is more more progress than I was even hoping, to, expecting to see. However, we have all these network issues. So, yeah, uh, my topic before the call and after the call will be AMD PCI pass through. If that is categorically broken, we need to find out exactly how and why that broke and get that fixed for fourteen, or else we get to look really stupid. Uh, do you do you guys have any testing frameworks on on Beehive that's like does these kind of testing, not the code testing, but rather integration testing, regression testing? I do it with like I found that VM images are very helpful, and I wish I had been keeping track of you know years of weekly snapshots. However, that would be really inconvenient. Uh, Glenn Barber, who shipped a snapshot today, keeps them for like what three weeks. I don't know if there's secretly a repo. They're definitely reproducible because we know when the snapshot took place, but doing the full release is not super handy. Ah, don't get me started. Anyway, ah. Uh, Anything else, Daniel Antonig and Santiago? Thank you so, so much for all of your input. You've covered a lot of ground. Thank you this for was all me. fascinating, largely way above my weight class, but it was uh, very educational. Senor Martinez. Michael, uh, yes. uh, I, I might have bring some good, uh, sad news, which is uh, <clears throat> uh, we might need to also start organizing calls for uh, quote unquote HPC. Uh, you know, like scientific community and whatever John D is doing in his big clusters, which because you know they 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 are a whole category of their own problems. Yes, this is true, and I've definitely encountered scaling issues over the yes. years, such that, well, how many tap devices can you have? So I did a simple script to like hit that limit, and that's also where I had this IF test. So, not to is it a thirty-two bit number? Said, uh, it was. I, it's documented in the minutes here. Go for it. Um, <laughs> So for example, um, you can test, to use the test in the left bracket sense, mm -hmm. you can test if a kernel module is loaded, okay? So I wanted to simply test nothing more, nothing less if a, where is it here? Um, if a network device exists, not what its speed is, not what its type is, but does it exist? Does TAP 500 exist, yes or no? And so I found that, here it is. Um, I found that just simply doing like ls dash, or what, if config dash L, or just doing a simple probe of the device got mm -hmm. really, really slow, like stunningly yes, that's slow. Correct. It should just be a few seconds. It's kernel information. And yeah, so. Uh, is it Tim? One of the reasons for that is because it's a, it's a, I think it's a hash map inside the system rather than being a linked list. Okay. So, you know, it, it, it doesn't go that fast when the number goes large. There you go. There's a, yeah, that's a good So one. he produced Ooh. a simple little tool to just sniff it. Nothing more, nothing less. And of course it was instantaneous to say, yeah, you've got 300 tap devices or whatever. So uh, scaling issues. HPC issues. So to your point, if we were to have a call relating to HPC, who beyond the people who are already on this call would be there? Who? Uh, I mind? know that the new people are interested. Yep. Uh, if, can can you name a people, university or research it's project? Gonna be, it's going to be a, a, a enterprise working group from Europe and a university from Spain they all use FreeBSD, by the way, and some of them want to use FreeBSD because of our awesome infrastructure, yeah. but they are very sad about our very bad application layer, aka lack of scientific applications, but that's another story. Um, so the idea was, hey, what if we make a scientific HPC group where we discuss both the application layer issues, such as Linuxism problems for porting, 
as well as uh, high performance computing problems. So I will be talking with the community. And by the way, again, thanks to the FreeBSD Foundation, they are organizing the meetings between me and the, 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 the uh, everyone else to see what what kind of problems they have. Um, and the idea is we might we might end up trying to organize, let's say, biweekly calls about HPC and the scientific community. So it would be porting, scalability, and the infrastructure. As in be as your own time infrastructure. Porting, scalability, porting, scalability, and infrastructure. Okay. Yes. There's also large interest in like integrating th things such as a Slurm, you know, the uh, job manager. Uh, which is used on top five five hundred supercomputers into FreeBSD. It it, it yeah. does work on FreeBSD, but it's it's not that good. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of room for improvement, etc. So it, the discussion is still going, but I'll see where we end up there. Well, and uh, I, I I'm okay with organizing those as well. You know, uh, if it's going to be biweekly or even monthly, it's actually fine too. You know, just to to see where everyone is, what the problems are. Because I, I feel I'm fighting alone, you know, in my <laughs> bioinformatics institute. I, I feel like I'm fighting alone. I, I would have to have a small community that who has the same problems and is working on the solutions. So in pure practicality, I'm obviously abusing this Thursday slot. And if you want to just experimentally say, hey, let's bring these unique people together, I'm happy to facilitate or you're welcome to just rip off the model of what I'm doing. Of course. Whatever it takes. Of course. Okay, yeah. we're down. I'll, I'll, hopefully, hopefully, I'll know that next week. Daniel and Antrenig. Uh Okay. Dan Trenig, anything else? No, thank you. Thank you very much. This we was awesome. covered a lot of ground. Uh, welcome back, Daniel. Uh, I do want to run some things by you outside this context. Actually, let's uh, say our goodbyes and we can all hang on out for a few minutes. Like Thank and you, subscribe. Everyone. Like and subscribe. Yes, please. <laughs>